and welcome everybody to this week's Maternity and Midwifery Hour. It's great that you're here and thank you for coming. We're going to have a really good evening tonight. We're, you'll notice there's only two of us on the screen at the moment because we've got a few technical problems, uh, and, but Joy Palmer will be joining us shortly. Um, as you know, this my name's Sue MacDonald. I always forget to introduce myself. And I'm the curator of the Maternity and Midwifery Festivals and also these Maternity, maternity and Midwifery Hours every week. Um, and it's my pleasure to be with you this evening to chair the session. As many of you will know, these were designed in, in um, response to the COVID uh, pandemic last year. So we're now on series three, session seven. Um, and we, we were really trying to make sure that midwives, student midwives, aspiring student midwives and people in maternity care, and that has included some obstetricians and paediatricians who've joined us and some doulas. So welcome to any of those people who are with us this evening. Um, they're accessible tonight and they're accessible after Friday as well. So if you have any colleagues who are interested do point them towards the, the sessions because there's loads there, not just this evening, but there's loads to, to get to. This is all via Matflix, and this is our video streaming from the Midwifery Experts. And it's a fantastic resource if you happen to be doing a little old assignment or if you happen to be doing um, your revalidation or any other bit, bit, bit of work where you need some up-to-date information from the experts, a really good resource. Um, so thank you to Matflix for supporting this evening. Um, and just remember that as, as your resource. Now, tonight we're going to be looking at the key issues that have come from Embr the Embrace report, the Confidential Inquiries into Maternal Mortality which was published at the end of last year. And I'm really delighted to be joined by Kim Morley and Joy Palmer. Joy will be with us sh shortly, but we have Kim. And I thought I'd just start with a little moment of the week, Kim, just to start things off a little. A moment of the week. OK, my moment of the week is I'm actually on annual leave, but this is the first day I've had some actual leave this week. And my moment was um, I've become in a bubble with my son and daughter-in-law and I got to hug my granddaughter. Oh. And that is, I can't tell you how much that meant oh, to me. Wow. Yeah, and my son. That is that. Oh, that's a lovely moment to share. Thank you so much. That's really nice. And congratulations. And I'm sure it won't be the last hug. By I hope means. not. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. I'm not sure. Is um, is Joy with us? Oh, good. Hello, Joy. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Thank you so much for being with us and welcome this evening. To, to coming to the hour and we were just starting with this moment of the week <laughs> oh you've got to think now um yes i do need to think um moment of the week um was i had one of my favorite um dishes um Ooh. which i really love um and probably you're gonna be you're gonna be <laughs> when i tell you <laughs> and um it's cow foot and Ooh. And rice and butter beans. Love it. Love it. Okay. <laughs> well, I I will I'll be with you on the the, the value of your favourite food. Yes. We all have a favourite food and our favourite food won't be anyone else's favourite food. And <laughs> I think the, the one thing about lockdown has been that food becomes very much more important, but you have to hope that it's not too fattening so that we don't all end up too wide when we come out of lockdown to get through the door yeah so thank you for that joy <laughs> that's wonderful i'm just going to go through the usual things that i do just want to remind people and except they probably don't need to be reminded we're still in the lockdown though next week there might be news that it's kind of different the statistics and the images are still very um difficult and very sad and the, the statistics are, are telling us that the infections are going down a bit but there's still the death rate is quite significant and that's really hard and it's very hard for our colleagues especially in nursing in intensive care and in high dependency care units who are looking after people who are so sick 
Um, and we want to send love and condolences to people who've lost people, loved ones, and also send lots of love and, and good healing thoughts to people who are ill at the moment that they'll get better. Um, there are some very positive stories that have come out about people who've been very ill and who've managed to come out of intensive care and gone home. And that's always such a, a lovely buzz for all of us. It's very difficult, especially within the health service. We have lost people within the caring uh, services, and that's been also difficult. So people will know colleagues and will have lost colleagues, and we send love to you as well. And also I want to say a big thank you, as always, to our intensive care colleagues and our high dependency care colleagues, and also people who are keeping everything going, and that includes maternity care service workers, midwives, student midwives, nurses, healthcare support workers, the porters, everyone who keeps everything going because especially, and I think it's especially within maternity services, things carry on. You can't stop having a baby that carries on and we have to keep going. And the midwives have been absolutely fabulous as have our fantastic student midwives. So well done you all. Also, I want to say a special thank you to the vaccine centres and the vaccinators, many of whom are midwives, nurses, volunteers from all over who've gone there to go and help out. And that's a real light at the end of the tunnel for people. So fantastic. And thank you. And keep up the good work. That's fantastic. We're all waiting for this vaccine, I know. Now, we're going to have um, a little bit of news. Now, people will have, and they might have different views on this, but the Duke and Duchess of Sus Sus Sussex are expecting their second baby to join Archie. And that has to be good news because a, a, a new baby is good news. That's fantastic. We know vaccines are well underway, and I think we're, we've hit well over 15 million vaccinations, which is incredible and fantastic. So good on that and um, now also new things to find out for midwifery wise our friends at birthrights and we've uh, had maria booker speak to us on one of the maternity hours fantastic they've published basic the basic birthrights like a sort of manifesto of what women should expect the bottom line of things that women should expect including the on the top comes you have the right to say no to any intervention tests or treatment for you or your child this is on your resources page which is available and um, after and you can have a look after this session so all the links are there and also they've launched the new inquiry to drive action on racial injustice in maternity care services. And that's being chaired by Shaheen Rahman, who's a QC, Queen's Council. And that actually had they had their original their inaugural meeting last week. And this is well overdue and should come up with some really useful um recommendations actions i think for all of us to take on board to address the inequality some of which we're going to talk about this evening i know there's also a new publication out from the lancet on women and children's health in conflict settings which may be of interest to people again that's on the resource list weather news i like to cover everything here there's been snow in texas i can't imagine that i don't think of texas as being cold at all and in athens so there's a fantastic image of the parthenon you know on the the um the the little hill above athens covered over with snow fantastic image to see so do and do have a look on the resources page we've included lots of resources references and really good websites to look at from this evening's session so that will be very useful for you but in the meantime you need to listen to Kim and, and Joy who will give you the little nuggets of wisdom and most of you will know that the Embrace Confidential Inquiries is published every couple of years and covers three years of confidential inquiries into maternal mortalities. And these have always given midwives, student midwives, very clear information about what we need to do after, you know, if, if someone has lost their life, there's often a problem that we can find. It's not 
necessarily someone's fault, but there may be faults in the system. And this episode tonight is looking at some of the challenges from the most recent report. And these include some of the inequalities and disparities between white, black and Asian women, black and brown women, but also highlighted some of the key causes of women's death, one of which we'll focus on, which is epilepsy. Now, if any of you, again, this is a very good little thing, a lay summary of um, the whole report. It's really a useful thing to have even, you know, if you want a sort of shortcut to information. So I would recommend that to you. Now we're going to start with Kim. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.